The suspect in the shooting in an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs is being held by police on preliminary murder and hate crimes charges. Anderson Aldrich is accused of killing five people and wounding nearly 20 others on Saturday night. Stephanie Sy begins our coverage. Police have so far released few details about the shooting. The suspected gunman is a 22-year-old who was said to have previously threatened his mother and neighborhood with a bomb in 2021. There were no records of Colorado's red flag laws being triggered, which would have allowed authorities to temporarily seize his weapons. Among the victims, Daniel Aston, a 28-year-old transgender man who worked as a bartender at Club Q. Derek Rump, a 38-year-old bartender and Club Q co-owner. Kelly Loving, a 40-year-old transgender woman visiting from her home in Denver. 22-year-old Raymond Green Vance and 35-year-old Ashley Paw. At least 18 others were injured, some of whom remain in critical condition. Witnesses recalled hearing gunshots, thinking at first they were a part of the music before the reality of the situation hit. We saw bodies. It was hard. Police started receiving 911 calls around 11.57 p.m. The gunman entered the club and immediately opened fire with a semi-automatic rifle. He had multiple firearms. At least one patron fought and disarmed the shooter, subduing him until officers arrived just minutes later. Today, the mayor of Colorado Springs praised that bravery. It's an incredible act of heroism. And I think when you look at this in the time frame, uh, that act probably saved uh, a lot of lives. Uh, there's no question about that. Saturday was the eve of Transgender Day of Remembrance, a day meant to memorialize trans victims lost to hate crimes. For Colorado Springs, the day now marks an unthinkable tragedy that happened in a space that was supposed to be safe. Our community is shattered. This is the only LGBTQIA plus space we have in the city of Colorado Springs. Where are we gonna go? For residents of Colorado Springs mourning those they've lost, the pain is still fresh and remains a grim reminder of violence aimed at LGBTQ Americans. During a press conference moments ago, prosecutors said the preliminary charges could change during the course of the investigation, but police did not release any major new details about the case or the motive. I want to get some reaction now to the shooting and the fear and anger clearly many are feeling. Nadine Bridges is the executive director of One Colorado, a leading adv advocacy group in the state working to advance equality for LGBTQ individuals. Nadine Dean Bridges, thank you for joining the news hour during what must be a very difficult day um, for you and your community. When you learned about the location of this mass shooting, the fact that it was in Colorado Springs, that that club was hosting a drag show to commemorate Trans Day of Remembrance the next day, what was your initial reaction? Um, I was I was shocked. I uh, received a uh, uh, a message from one of our partner um, organizations in Oklahoma at 6:15 in the morning, and um, I am very I work very closely with some of the LGBTQ plus leaders um, in Colorado Springs, and I was absolutely heartbroken. Um, I'm devastated. We all are. And I know you were actually at the vigil last night um, in Colorado Springs. You've been to other vigils. You've been meeting with members of the community. Uh, what is the response shaping up to look like from members of the community? What, what do they want to do now? Yeah, um, we were, I was at the, the vigil yesterday afternoon. And um, I think at this point, you know, it's it's only been, you know, 36 hours and our community is really just trying to come together to ensure that um, all of our members who have been harmed, um, who are dealing with grief, uh, that they have the resources that they need. Um, we want them to know that we we care for them and that we love them. Um, you know, for those local leaders um, like Jesse Pocock, um, the executive director of Inside Out in Colorado Springs, which is the only youth center in the area, um, we have provided them with the resources they need. Um, and the support that they need um, to just kind of get through in these next uh, weeks and months. 
We still don't know um, the motivations of the shooter, Nadine, but investigators, they say, are looking at this through the lens of it possibly being a hate crime. Um, as you learn the scant details that we know, is there any other way for you to see this attack? No, I mean, I, I don't know the motives, and um, I most certainly don't want to make assumptions. But what I do know is that there is a lot of attacks on our community. Um, there has been a lot of anti-LGBTQ rhetoric um, for political gain. Um, we know that there are folks, uh, leaders in the community who have made it a point to uh, harm our, our, our transgender, non-binary, and gender expansive youth in the community. Um, and, you know, when you uh, have this type of rhetoric um, and you don't provide support to communities who may feel, feel lonely, um, it breeds hate. Um, and so there's no doubt in my mind that whether this is deemed as a hate crime um, is, is, you know, I don't know. But what I do know that when you have to kill five people and harm 20 other people and potentially could have killed many more, that's hate. Um, and that's motivated by hate. The last mass shooting um, targeting a gay nightclub was in Florida several years ago. 49 people were killed. But I also understand that gay and trans people are killed every year. In fact, there was a report out just a few days ago um, from the Human Rights Campaign that at least 32 trans people have been violently killed already this year. Um, was what happened this weekend a wake-up call? <sighs> I wish I could say that it was a wake-up call. Um, you know, we do Transgender Day of um, Remembrance every year. Um, when we talk about the transgender women, in particular trans, uh, trans women of color who are murdered in our communities, um, and yet we still have folks who think it's, a, it's, it, that, that it's okay to say harmful things and to make our community a butt of their jokes. We know that they are, uh, you know, a, attacking our, our, our drag queen story times, um, you know, saying negative things about youth who are just trying to be themselves. And I wish I could say that this is a wake up call, um, you know, but I, I don't know. What I do know is that our community is beautiful and strong um, and they will continue to support each other. Um, we're not gonna hide from this. Um, we're going to continue to push until our community members and our political um, leaders um, do what they need to do to protect our communities. And I should add that your community members showed great bravery and heroism uh, as well over the weekend. Nadine Absolutely. Bridges, the executive director of One Colorado, thank you so much for joining the news hour tonight. Thank you for having me.